What's going on everybody? This is Fry. So today I'm going to try a budget green shadow deck. Budget means there's no legendaries. Uh, there is only one uh, example of a super rare uh, in this deck. Uh, it is the Roto Big. Uh, I find a lot of potential uh, with this card. Now we sort of built the deck around this card. Uh, the idea is if you grow this, it's attacks in two lanes. Uh, so for example, if you give this three extra attack and three extra health, would then be doing 10 damage it could do bonus attacks with this and then it's going to be doing just so much damage and finishing off uh, opponents quite easily um so i did make this into a tempo deck we are using podfather and a lot of peas uh so the idea is you really want to make a play on turn one uh maybe either grow it or play tortured on turn two the roto Bega actually is quite good as as a tempo card uh because uh, it can remove uh, zombies off the field, you know, kind of for free while you still are putting uh, your card on. Tempo, of course, means staying ahead of your opponent on the field. And the Grocery and the Fertilizer are obviously really good to grow everything in this deck, particularly the Rotobega, uh, because it'll gain all the extra attack, and it'll actually get a double effect because it's attacking in two lane. Podfather is to buff up all the peas, and uh, we're calling this the Grill Next Door because we're running uh, a lot of cards that we're trying to really attack in multiple lanes. Um, like the three Peter attacks here and next door, and uh, so does the um, the Tricorn, and particularly when you evolve this card from many of these small cards in this deck, uh, this could be really, really, uh, really damaging, especially if you grow it. Running Plan of the Grapes for some card draw. This is again another card that's uh, in general good. It's very good with the Rotobega because uh, the Rotobega is very good at kind of getting around the zombies and uh, hitting your opponent's face, which can make you draw enough cards to give this deck sustain. Uh, the P Patch, which is not only another P, uh, it also is a great springboard card to place on the field and then stick a Rotobega or a Three Peter on it. Uh, that will give make them that when they come to the field, they will immediately. Uh, be super buffed, and uh, it's also a piece, so it's a nice card to grow. It'll end up being a 2 4 4 if you have Podfather on the field. Anyway, let's give this a shot. Uh, I think this is going to work well. I'm pretty sure the tempo decks, again, where you're building up your board uh, faster than your opponent, are actually a lot better now than they were last season. So, uh, love to see this budget deck work. Here it is. Hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. Let's see if we can get those highlights going. Spank so hard. Here we go. Uh, I don't see this being that useful in this matchup. Damn. Do you have a going on here? Do we play Torchwood on one? I believe we do. It doesn't get removed. It does protect the Rotobega pretty well. We could even play it in lane three and just use the Rotobega to protect it the next turn. I like it. Podfather should work. We'll, we'll draw some more peace. I think we're actually going to play Torchwood on one in this deck, though. And it gives you another minion to grow. I'm going to put it right here. Uh, it does give you another minion to grow with your Grosho, uh, which will turn this into a 2-5, which isn't bad. 2-5 too much. It also sets up very well for turn 3. We have a thing to stick this behind. I'm a mustache. <laughs> uh, this is the play. Again, I know it seems like a waste of a torture, but it is protecting the Rotobega. The Rotobega is attacking two cards here. And, um, you know, he's sort of losing the tempo that he gained back by his killing this imposter. Uh, so we'll get another mustache, though, unfortunately. Uh, we can grow the Rotobega, though. That's probably what we're going to try to do. Let's see what he comes in with. Now, my main concern right now is Line Dancing Zombie, actually. Line Dancing Zombie would be quite good there. I am seeing Mustaches, so are there any three-cost Mustache cards? Uh, I unfortunately don't have that list in my, in my head yet. He wouldn't put it here. This might be a card he just wants to go face. I did get rid of the Gravestone removal from this deck, unfortunately. Uh, this is a weird play. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Podfather just in case. Uh, that is a line dancing zombie. That'll put him in a little bit of a predict predicament. And no, it's a fire. Interesting. Super happy to see that. Was not expecting that. This might be a pirate mustache deck or something. Mustache guy's gonna die. He's not gonna get the teleport. Let's do a Podfather setup now. So now I can grow the Podfather if I want. There's a Peapod. Oh yeah! So it's gonna be Peapod Grow Shroom. Holy moly with this! 
Here we go. Rotoveg is big, so the Podfather is protected for all practical purposes. We'll probably make that an environment in lane three. Start chipping away at the Rotovega, but that's gonna go down for free. I mean, he's gonna need freeze environment now to protect us, which maybe was a reason not to play this year. Now he got super, so we are super set up right now. Oh, we're in great shape. Oh, are we in great shape. <clears throat> A lot of gravestones coming out. He's down to 10. Look at this field. <laughs> look at our field and look at his. Now, he does have some tempo because all of his cards are really cheap. El Cheapo cards. Uh, we do have some plays here. We definitely have the plays. This Rotobig, if he doesn't have a way to remove this right now, he dead. And he probably doesn't. Shark would have been really good there. <laughs> he can still play Shark. Fertilize would be cool. What's the point of this of this mini ninja? Do I freeze this? I believe I'm gonna freeze this for a card. Not really sure what the point of this was. But there's a few things. He could turn this to a deadly environment, in which case it would be good. I can play this in the water. Is it worth playing in the water? Uh, this is the one that's gonna do the damage. The Podfather could die for all I care. Now we have one P left in our hand, but no one cares. Um, we have Rotobega Groshroom. So I don't know if I'm going to waste a Rotobega. It's just a 2-1. I don't think I'm going to waste it here. Let's, in case he's able to survive here and start clearing my minions away. Ah, oh, that's rough. Okay. Yeah, he can get some powers that will that will clear a couple things. He can very likely get a Lightning Bolt. Dang. Okay, that makes him survive a little bit. Six damage. Thing and <clears throat> teleport. Teleport. Man, okay, six damage. Down to four rolled to one. Amazing. This this just took damage, these guys. So this is actually gonna die. And it's gonna go. Oh, <laughs> fertilize. I'll take it. Great pickup. When you clog all your lanes. When you clog all your lanes like never before. Uh, it actually is worth making this play now. Uh, just because two damage could very likely make us win this game. And that is so slow. Peapod, of course, is growing while it's protected by that Torchwood, not only becoming a very strong offensive force. Uh, the Rotobega still hits here. That's the problem. So it's that's going to be lethal. There is nothing he can do here. Oh, uh, this died to the... <laughs> right. The Groshroom was... That was actually a really bad play because the Groshroom would have protected... Ah, uh, he didn't have anything. And then he could have gotten Freeze, and now the Rotobega in the lane 4 would have actually killed him, so... I'm just thinking if he would have blocked. Alright, that's a very, very solid game one. You guys can see what I'm saying now. I was using a version of this deck for those of you potentially watching this video on YouTube. Um, I did experiment with a very different version of this deck where I wasn't running any of the P's. I wasn't running Podfathers or any of... It was really lacking a lot of early game minions. And um, There's two separate ways of winning with this deck. That's very important. You can't have a deck that's just focused on one thing. Because what if you don't get your card? Or if you have one card that you need for the win condition, or one type of strategy, it's a, it's, it's, it's very likely. It's not going to be consistent. Uh, this we have several ways of winning. You can basically play anything on the board, protect them, and grow them. Uh, you can get a Podfather play, a second way of winning. <clears throat> Third way is to grow Rotovega. Super, super pleased with that. Uh, this is better than this, I believe. You don't really need that the big removal early on against him. Uh, so we'll ditch that. Uh, yeah, we're seeing a lot of peas here. <sighs> I guess this is good. I'd love to see Rotobega here, but that oh, should be fine. I showed the setup the other day. I'm not going to be doing that every day in the stream. I, we could utilize this as a protection card with Peapod. You know, Peapod and, in the middle lane is often quite good here. Rustbolt is hot. <sighs> Pyrotex. I'll do Pyrotex. I'm going to do Pyrotex. I'm going to do Berry Dex. Apparently the Strong Burying card is quite good. Um, haven't even used it yet. I'm going to be doing a different deck every day. I did promise a couple budget decks this week, so uh, I'll be trying to do basically four expensive decks and two budget decks, something like that. And again, uh, really no way of removing this. The only way he'll be able to remove this actually is <clears throat> super into, um, into Trapper territory. This is actually the only way to remove that card.
Velociradish. Um, I just stuck Velociradish into Swarm Nightcap and it was pretty good. Wow. That's a really good peep pod. I don't even have to address that. I could start developing the Peapod here. I could also just play this. What do I want to get with the Podfather? I'd like to get some value out of it. Again, you can't deadly, you can't do anything really here. The tempo is real. So I could springboard the Podfather next turn. It's not a bad idea. This will be a bigger threat, so <laughs> I'll probably go after it and then set these up. I always could springboard the, the Peapod next turn. I, I think we'll make the... Actually, let's do this here. Making the uh, auxiliary play, we'll call it. Unlife, mystery egg, zomb zombies, best friends, good idea. I had a really good egg deck last season. It was very fun and uh, pretty effective. Groshima. Again, we, we could go with Groshim. I wouldn't really like to Groshim the the launch pad, but I could actually stick the Groshim on the launch pad and make two big guys. We'll see what he does. Um. I don't think it's going to be a smelly zombie. I think it's going to be something smaller. Yeah, I like that play. So it could have a deadly card in his hands. And they'll take out the... Uh, they'll use it to take out the Peapod. But he more more likely has nothing. That'll stall it for a turn. Uh, the Peapod will grow and will will actually uh, be able to get through next turn. Interesting play. Do I want to kill his um, Gentleman Zombie with my Super? Or do I want to set up a Podfather already? The kind of the more you wait on the Podfather is usually the better. Actually, I could I, well, I could set up the Podfather, just not, not utilize it yet. The 4-1 is a huge threat against, again, this hero with no small removal. Huge Giganticus, basically. No field clear. To be seen. I could also waste a Torchwood. He might be relying on these two brains. These two brains could, could seriously help him here. Got a lot of plays. gonna waste the 4-1. It will trade with this bigger gravestone. There's no way to remove the headstone carver. I believe this is the play. We're gonna lose 6 damage by placing the Podfather here, but it's better than that being a 2 cost guard and I'm deadlying this. We're gonna get a lot of value out of this Podfather, so uh, it's it's very likely now this we're gonna lose 4 damage on this play, but probably worth it. That's fine. I'm, I'm happy. And again, setting up the Podfather in a turn that he can't really have any answers to it. Unless I had been line dancing zombie, of course. Uh, it's worth it. We're getting, again, so much value. Every turn the Peapod is on the field, we're getting just so much value. Amazing. So we're just going to play everything here, I think. Grosham. We'll see if we need to Grosham something we will. If not, we'll try to play both of our Ps. I think the priority here would be to play both of our Ps. Um... Because value. The 7 4 is a threat, and the, and the, and the Pond Father is a threat. I have a feeling it's going to be PP, and then the Torchwood will just see what, what the best play is. 7 4, what's going on, Sebi Ball? Welcome. Uh, can you do Control Z Mech? Yes, it's on the very, very long list of decks. Uh, I've, I've had success already off stream with Control Z Mech. That's cool. Okay, so if this ends up here, this is going to be a 5. Um. You know, he's... I could make this survive by grocerooming it. Tempting. <laughs> Develop this early. We'll use this next turn. And he's he's had a he's having a hard time removing this big card. I 
genuinely think this is the best play. If it ends up being Headstone Carver, as he's done for. Actually, this trade's not bad. Nah, it didn't want This trading with with grave, mixed up Grave Digger and that 50-50 is not bad. This going up against Headstone Carver is actually not good to buff this up. That's a good trade. You know what? I'll take the five damage and I'll set something up. We'll have another wing for next turn. Uh, on second thought, I probably would have. Uh, going face is not bad though. That's that's okay. This dies. He gets another teleport, which is actually really useful. Got another P. Amazing. So we'll just play P. We'll just play PP. You can play Stompin' on 3 for play Cryo on 2. I hear, but that's not a good setup. Usually Stompin' on is best when you can set something up on turn 2, particularly the uh, black hole environment. Let's play that on 1. There's the big card tumble. This one's better. <coughs> We're in fantastic shape. Obviously using this as a 4-4 is a lot better than springboarding it. So this just becomes a 2 cost 4-4. And he has just had no answer to our podfather. Uh, very likely for us to win here. Teleport, and I forgot about the teleport. Teleport's are harsh. But again, we're going to have a huge board and not a whole lot of problems. And that was his whole turn. He has a teleport of one. That mini ninja doesn't affect the field. Now, the pirate does. It does draw him a card. He has a severe card advantage, but he's got to deal with um, three very, very big threats in the field. Three Peter would be the best pick up here. This is not bad, though. It's a 4 4. It's like getting a 4 cost 4 4, really. Or a 7 cost 4 4. What's up, my elbow in pain? Thank you. Appreciate it. Actually sick, so I think uh, when you have a cold and people give you compliments that you look cute, so I guess that's a good good compliment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nebula! Pro I think he has a teleport left, so he'll teleport the link into that. It's too slow, he's wasting brains on Nebula and teleport. Okay, that's his play. Uh, I'm gonna confidently change this to 2 and up. Tempo decks are back. Tempo decks are back in a big way. Stompin' on is officially dead. The era of Stomp- I'm gonna make Stompin' on decks eventually. That'll be the one I'll do in like a few weeks after I've tried all the new stuff. I'm gonna say, hey, can we make Stompin' on work again? But Amazing. Ever since So Magic Beans got nerfed, you can't play Planet of the Grapes at the right times. That's a good point in, in Nightcap Storm. I think that one, I did experience the exact same thing, and I'll tell you exactly my thoughts. Nightcap, Nightcap Swarm, in my opinion, was the absolute clear clear best deck in the game last season. It was better than the Stompin' on decks. It had a couple of weaknesses. Uh, Con Man particularly was its weakness, but uh, it was so good. The So Magic Beans used to draw a card, and the Planet of the Grapes in that deck is, is so important. Um, one, two, three. Hold on. Let's look for a small P would be better. Hmm. If we're playing tempo, this actually might not be good. This should be fine. Uh, what am I saying? What's that? So, uh, Planet of the Grapes is super important in the Nightcap Swarm deck, because it draws you all the cards. I'm not going to go explain exactly how that deck works, but basically you're putting Admiral Navy Bean or Astro Shroom into Planet of the Grapes, and they're doing damage and drawing tons of cards. It seems like since So Magic Beans doesn't draw you cards, it used to help you really cycle through your deck to get that all-important thing. Ooh, what do we do here? That's a problem. We don't have an answer to this. You know, if I would have kept my one drop, I would I would have a very good answer to this. I wonder if Super M1 was the right play. Ooh, that hurts.
This is such a rough play. I'm gonna save that. Is it worth putting Green Shadow Super on first turn? It depends what kind of deck. And this deck actually lasts. You want to use it to protect one of your minions since it's a tempo deck. And a deck that's a little bit more aggressive. Um, it would be good. Now, Wrath, I believe, is the play. <coughs> Which does make this viable. This, of course, is my play. I know that seems like a really sucky play. But we gotta remove this Gargalogus before we can get the, the value from it. Ooh, good play. Dang! Well done. Wrath, of course, is a gargantuar trick, so he does get a two two discount since it's Gargologist. Because Gargologist. Ooh. We have a quick answer to his first guard, though. He avoided the middle lane wisely. are still looking extremely rough in this game. This probably should have gone here so the Tricorn would have better lanes. Uh, slight consideration. Well, I'll survive that. Yeah, this is just a bounce. It doesn't really solve the problem. We can replay that next turn. It's really just a skull. I'd say in this deck you should less do do this plan turn one. Dang, Rolling Stone is just killing us. Oh, we're getting wrecked here. This again is a mid-range deck, and we didn't have a quick answer to Gargologist. Basically a ramp deck. Good old ramp. We are getting screwed right now. Sadness. Gonna block. Some good things might happen here. I would love to block and get Embiggen, actually. When we kill the Gargologist. Now we don't. <laughs> Alright. I would play Embiggen still. I got it. Draws a card. Grocery. environment. I don't have a lot of good ways of dealing with that. Drawing a card would be good here. Hopefully that Swabby would end up in the water, actually. Come on, now. Knockout would have been insane there. Uh, we're, we're in decent shape. Did go in the water. Uh, four damage would be so good here. Some of our colleges would go down. <clears throat> this is a huge threat. This is a huge, huge force. He might not have any more guards left. Give me something good. Uh. So I'd love him to play a Garg that gets, just gets shot down this turn. That would be amazing tempo for us. God, this doesn't get shot down. I would want to be hero probably. Rodeo fucking Garg. Come on, man. Sorry, guys. Whoopsies. How much did this cost? One. That's still a Rodeo. The main lane we don't want this to be in one is, is in one, so let's... I guess we could have not used super there. Unfortunately. Reported. Uh, is Turquoise Skull Zombie good or is it Dookie? I'll, I'll, I'll find out some other 
Okay. Uh -huh. All right. That got us. And again, that was a that was a type arc. That was a match archetype. I'm sorry. I'm still explaining nightcap storm thing. Uh, it's, it's a long explanation. Basically, so magic beans helps you get Planet of the Grapes because it drew a card. Um, that was that. The reason why we lost there is because of the match archetype. We're running a tempo deck. It'll beat control decks. Uh, typically, but it will lose to mid-range decks. Decks that basically uh, get very strong very quickly around 3, 4, 5. And his Gargologists uh, helped him to do that. We didn't have the answer to Gargologist early, unfortunately. We would have. If I would have played around Gargologist again, if there would have been a meta that Gargologist is common, I would have actually saved my cards and actually have, been, have had a great answer for Gargologist and probably would have ended up winning that game. This looks good. <laughs> Decent. What cards do you think need a buff and a nerf from set four? I, I think the game is kind of balanced. I'm, I'm, yeah, the Nightcap Swarm deck. You can check that out on YouTube if you know what that is. I believe that was the deck that needed the biggest nerf. The only card they nerfed was So Magic Beans, but the, the way... What are you doing, man? Are you freaking serious? That just makes me angry. That's not cool. Why would you do that? Why are you running Cardboard Zombie? This is a guy who's freaking ranked 30. He probably graduated from Ultimate League already. Maybe he just got it. Why is he running... Why is he freaking running Card... What the heck is this guy doing? Why does... No, why does he have that card? The humanity. If I had this card, I would have put this in. Anyway, because science. That's why. Watch him play drone engineer and one now. Like a scrub. Cardboard is not OP. Shut up. Who even runs that card? It's not even who. Yay! Fun. I think he made a bot. He made a bot that made the deck for him too. It was a finish for me deck, okay? <laughs> Wannabe Zamba? I love that. I love that so much. Well, I'll just lose to this guy too. Trade is fine. I think I'll just buff this one. What's the point in springboarding that? Should you recycle your leprechaun imps or keep it? I would recycle them because if you're gonna, you can always recraft them back for free. Think about it. Those same sparks that you uncraft them, you recraft them. I would say, guys, people who are in the spark struggle, Uncraft your leprechauns. First of all, they're not good. Second of all, again, you can craft them back. You'll be able to craft a better card. So, uncraft your leprechauns, everyone. Let's get some nice stuff. <coughs> I made fun of the pea shooter guy here and there. I would like to develop Podfather here, just so we can set three people. This actually makes it worse. I might not even am big in. This electrician, I can play around electrician. It's so much value next turn that I might as well spend a card to uh, take that out. Gosh darn, and I wasted it too. Holy heck. Place for the uh, good setup for the tricor. Calling me three, Peter. Oh, 
I still want to prevent that six damage. If he just plays Gravestone here, I'm actually going to front it. Because I can't add a Gravestone and bonus attack. I thought it would be the, uh, the other one. <laughs> Why did he play his big card? Tell you. <coughs> I'm going to play a tricorn next turn because this is threatened badly. I smell you, zombies. Commons only deck, if possible. <laughs> good, good springboard card, good evolved card. I'll take it. can really remove this, so uh, I feel pretty confident here. Proc is blocked, we'll get a bonus deck next turn. Okay, and the three Peter should be able to kill that smelly zombie without it destroying my tricorn. I think you should improve the friend system in this game. Well, it's glitchy, so yeah. Gets blocked. Where's that? Look, mommy, I have two bonus attacks now. Now if he clogs all the lanes, I still win. With 18 damage. <laughs> we have an 18 damage play if he clogs all the lanes. Value. I can actually win with this one. Now. No one cares. Alright, well, we're 3 and 1. I didn't know if I should count that game. That was so weird. How did that guy get a rank 30? How in the world did that happen? And thank you so much, Panzer for um, Boss. For, uh, that must be a, one of those trick names. Uh, thank you so much for donating. I guess I should get that out of the game here. Covering the game. Keep it going. I'm okay, Sebi Balls. Just a common cold. It's not a big deal. We're a zombie of set four. Again, I don't. I, I I don't know those the answer to those questions after playing a set for three months. You know, I don't think about oh that what's the worst one. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that usually. I know I used to say ghost is the worst. Ghost isn't half bad anymore. I never really used the new ghost. The card I kinda neglected. That sucks. <coughs> Too many things that kill us. You still like old forearm bandit better than Kanma? Let's <laughs> just grow this. Why are you using Rotovega? It's such a good card to grow. I haven't even seen Rotovega really yet. I would like to see more Rotovegas. What happened to them? We kind of built the whole deck around them. We're just not seeing them, which is kind of why we do what we do. Interesting. It's not going to kill this, right? What could grow? Pod Father next turn. <clears throat> what is this gonna be? 
Probably nothing. It's called Grow This Card Deck. <coughs> it's too bad she knew Lily, basically. In this deck it is. I would have used Lily, except in this deck, since you have Rotobega and 3 Peter and other cards you really want to springboard to, which we haven't done yet, um, I, they're not good in lane 1, that's the problem, because you need them to attack him, you know, in the, both of the side lanes. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> that's your play! This, this guy, this guy suck. This guy suck the big one. The three Peter is obviously set up guaranteed for next turn. Um, and he has no big removal. This guy just has the Morticia. I mean, you know, a bunch of the samples just doesn't have to have anything in their hand. So the three Peter is gonna again. If he can't remove this, how's he gonna deal with the three seven repeat re repeater? That it does not even do anything because it's gonna get bounced off the freaking field. Talking about six plus seven this turn, it could win. Uh, that. Thing just gets freaking bounced. Acid rain, acid rain. No one even cares. Now it's a two six. No grocery man next turn. Uh, fertilizer next turn. Still just gets bounced right off the field. Here's another six. Dang, block that. Something and the guy will grow into the next to the next level. It's a two drop. Didn't matter what he got. Uh, so we'll grow into a three. Active ability would have been the best there. We are obviously in great shape. Podfather is a 4 4 here. We, can, we don't have any uh, setups, but it's probably going to be Podfather, Fertilized Day 3 Peter, or something like that. Ho, ho, ho. Deadly bonus attack? Is how many beans do we put in this basket? This is big enough already. It's not going to do that much damage here. Uh, if we do this one, this will be 8 damage, which is not enough. <sighs> Could have top deck rocket science. We have Groshim in hand. I'm going to go with this. To play. It's just this is good enough. This is four, two, and four, so we'll probably win. I don't. I'm playing around deadly bonus attack. I'm playing around rocket science. It just has bonus attack. Four. Yes. Probably win now. Almost for sure win. Two. Yes, guaranteed. Four and one. I'll take it. Tempo decks are back. I I can bring back Tempo Grass Knuckles today. It will actually be good. So. Uh, people who are, who, you know, people were wondering, a lot of people were wondering why I didn't do Temple Grass Knuckles last season. It was, again, because Ramp and Stompin' on decks kill Tempo decks. And those are dead now. Tempo's returning. Temple Grass Knuckles is going to be great. I can even make an expensive version now with the, uh, you know, Triceratops and stuff like that. Which, I, again, did not work last season. Uh, how's this environment do? Not very good with Podfather. Ooh! One to the two to the three to the four. I'm gonna keep this. Oh, actually, I should have mulliganed Podfather. I actually should have mulliganed Podfather. That was a mistake, because he's not very good against Rust Bowl. So we go here. Rust Bolt, ultimately Rust Bowl. Rust Bowl might again. He was the best hero last season. He might be the best hero again. Uh, if it's control, can Rust Bowl's become a control hero. And again, this is not gonna be a very easy deck to control. The Torchwood will get us out of knockout range. Um, let's see what happens. Got a player on Weed Spray. <clears throat> I'd love to set up the Rotovega here. He puts a 2 health minion there. Again, he didn't have Rolling Stone last turn. I'm gonna take this risk. Again, if he has some answer to a 2-1, he didn't have it last turn. So he could play any 2-drop here. Oh, harsh. Okay, still, it's it's not off the field, so we actually can grow that still. Uh, and cry rain. It's okay. His teacher's off the field, so is our peep button, unfortunately. And we could invest in the Rotobega. We could just play a new one. 
Really? Now, if we want to preserve the zero one, that we're not going to have any cards to grow and make this horrible. We have an answer to Stompin' On, by the way. That was turn three Stompin' On. Look at this answer. I'm going to go with this. Uh, we're going to sack, sack it. And uh, huge, huge forest. Look at this. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. I'm probably going to protect that with Torchwood and just try to ride this Rotovega uh, until I can try card. How great is Roto Vega? Unbelievable card. Thank you, Pavka. You know, Torchwood in front of a uh, Podfather is not bad either. I don't think he's gonna again. He didn't have Rolling Stone before. I believe this is the play. Kite Flyer? What was he planning to add on to that that would even threaten the Roto Vega? Wow! So, ah, the two damage is not good. I should have put the Podfather in four. What was I thinking? Please roll one. Yes! Down to five! Down to five, give me one cost P! Let's go! No! Would have been huge. This will proc the block now, and the Rotovega should finish him off here. Should seriously finish him off. This is probably lethal. He already used nerf. So... What could he have that would save him here? Chop doesn't work heal. He could get heal, in which case he'll be back up to 11, then down to 3. Rock wall doesn't help. Heal does help. There you go. Oh, that was a lucky 1 in 3 chance. That will actually draw him extra cards as well. Harsh. <laughs> I feel Rotovega, though. Is he frenzy with coffee? Confused. Decisions. This is a two cost gravestone. So, again, what do we got? Sumo, drone engineer. Probably Sumo. Six. Sumo, drone engineer, teleportation zombie. None of those do anything. So, I just have to factor out how do we actually win here? This is three damage. This doesn't even kill the kite flyer. The right play, I believe, is this one. Weirdly enough, this is the only way for us to actually get a solid three damage in this turn. That great? That's it. The gravestone costs two. There's no way it's buffed, right? No! Oh yeah, four damage. Oh, if it had been teleportation zombie, we actually went to one there. Uh, it is. It is lethal then. Guarantee. Oh, actually, the Rotobega kills him in lane 2 also. I forgot about that. <laughs> forgot the Rotobega decks backwards. And we're 5 and 1 with this deck now. What the heck was that guy trying to do? He's trying to coffee his science cards. He's trying to ramp coffee his science cards. I don't know. Now that, um, I don't know. Now that Rust Bolt is a good control hero, it could be you can combine control with Cryobrain. And use that as an option, in case they don't play anything. Drawing cards is usually better. What is the most control hero? Uh, I would say Grace, uh, Neptuna. Uh, the control Neptuna is probably the, still the most solid control hero. <laughs> I'm biased, because that's my favorite deck from set one. Um, <coughs> looking pretty good here. Ooh, is that good? Uh, yeah, this will... This uh, anyway. I could play this on three. I don't want to play this on two. I'm going to hold on to the Torchwood, actually. That was a weird deck, yeah, I know. Hmm. I'd love to see a commit on turn three, because I'm going to play our Rocket Science. Because Rocket Science. Rotobega grow. We could actually, if he commits a gravestone here. Oh, come on, man. If we play around rocket science against Rust Bolt. FFS. He's not going to commit. He's playing control. He's probably a trickster deck, which means we got to get a move on right now. Um, just for perspective here. 
Well, the proc is blocked anyway. We don't have to remove that beam me up. So we're gonna play this right here. I hope this works. He, if he, if he has a rocket science, he wins. If he doesn't, we win. The chances of him having a rocket science. People typically don't run four with Rust Bolt because they rely on Chop. I would say pretty likely he does not have one. Not line dancing zombie. Thank you. I don't care. Draw cards all day, every day. He's running. Deep. Okay, I'm so less scared of this guy now. Um, plant food usually wins here. <laughs> usually wins. He hasn't. We haven't seen a power out of him, so we do have to play around. Um, chop. Good play. With the grave. We can't remove this. What is this gonna be? Sima? I have no idea what this is. I have no idea. Plant food does not win anymore. I'm gonna play around teleportation zombie and something with three attack. That we can definitely do. I'm playing around Chop also. I'm not getting that up to, to five until it's going to win the game for us. Landscaper. Very good. Rolling Stone? Turns out growing that would have would have basically won us the game. No, it's not. Okay. <clears throat> now we're still in amazing shape here. Uh, this, I believe, only charged the block meter once. Yes, it does. They're all in one lane. It goes per lane. Team ups is interesting because it's attacking several lanes, so I wasn't absolutely sure of that. <coughs> he might be going for weed spray. I think Roshrooming this is good. Set up the three, Peter. Let's play around weed spray. Will ever use chum champion, yes. Yes! Yes! Played around that weed spray! Uh, don't get Pogo! No problem! No problem at all! Ah! Uh, damage! The, 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 this should win here. Uh, that will die, which is. A good thing. It'll pro theoretically prevent some damage here too. Down to four. No, I rolled a three. Blah. Now what do we do? Plant food. Not quite getting it done. We're on the verge here. What is that I'm supposed to do? Go for the one and just yellow it. Okay, I believe this is the play. Might get chopped. So be it. Again, still four damage. Could maybe have a rolling stone in there somewhere. I bet he has chop in his hand. Weed spray again. Okay. This should proc the block. Might win here. Yes! Hold on one. If not, the three Peter would have been the three Peter would have been a three seven. He would have needed a, exactly a knockout to take it out. Our chances, even without rolling at one, were very, very high, so we get a lucky roll there. 